the thousands of hardworking, law-abiding, and peaceful truckers who, quite frankly, have kept all of you alive the last two years. The Trudeau government, entrusted with the well-being and rights of Canadians, has repeatedly failed its people. From heavy-handed responses to peaceful protests to the infringement on personal freedoms, their actions have left a trail of emotional distress and disillusionment among the populace. Resignation mid-semester at West Point Grey Academy Rumors of an explosive scandal were circulating at the top levels of Canada's media establishment back in 2019. Ottawa's longest-tenured political observers had been expecting a career-ending expose in the Globe and Mail edition, but that story never came. Because my dear listeners, Trudeau was in private talks with the principal source of that piece to suppress explosive allegations posed at him. It was hush-hush and rumor has it that the student was offered monetary compensation in exchange for non-disclosure agreement or in other terms, a gag order. Allegations of this nature, if true, would inevitably cast doubt on Trudeau's dedication to his academic commitments and his capacity to effectively balance his responsibilities as both a teacher and a prominent political figure. The uncertainty surrounding his alleged resignation would likely fuel intense public scrutiny and potentially impact his credibility within both the educational and political communities. Rose Knight Affair In the alleged incident involving Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and a journalist named Rose Knight, the shocking revelation of inappropriate behavior sent ripples through the political landscape. The accusations of groping, if true, would mark a significant breach of trust and respect, especially given Trudeau's vocal advocacy for women's rights and gender equality. The subsequent apology from the Prime Minister may have provided some measure of accountability, but it could not erase the impact of the incident on the public's perception of his character and integrity. This event served as a stark reminder of the importance of upholding professional conduct and respect within all spheres of society, particularly within the realm of political leadership. Nova Scotia Mass Shooting The Nova Scotia Mass Shooting, which occurred in April 2020, stands as one of Canada's deadliest incidents of its kind. The gunman, identified as Gabriel Wortman, carried out a 13-hour killing spree, resulting in the deaths of 22 individuals and leaving a trail of devastation in rural communities. The incident raised significant questions about the response of law enforcement authorities, as there were concerns about the timeliness and effectiveness of the emergency alert system and the coordination of the police response. Wortman, who had no previous criminal record, was described as a successful denturist, and the motives behind his actions remained unclear. The tragedy highlighted critical gaps in Canada's gun control policies and the need for improved emergency response protocols to prevent such atrocities from occurring in the future. Gun control. Gun control has been a topic of ongoing debate in Canada, with efforts to regulate firearms dating back to the late 19th century. The current framework was significantly influenced by the 1989 Ecole Polytechnique massacre in Montreal, where a gunman killed 14 women, leading to the introduction of stricter gun laws. The Firearms Act of 1995 and subsequent amendments aim to enhance public safety by implementing rigorous licensing and registration requirements for gun owners, as well as imposing restrictions on certain types of firearms. In May 2020, the government announced a ban on over 1,500 models and variants of assault-style firearms, including the AR-15 rifle, which is a semi-automatic firearm. Critics argue that the regulations impose unnecessary burdens on law-abiding citizens and do little to deter criminal activity. There remains a contentious divide between the society especially for those emphasizing the importance of safeguarding the rights of responsible gun owners for example farmers and hunters. The data collected so far indicates that the violence has been caused by people outside of these parameters, so the government ban does not make any sense and there may be a different agenda behind the gun ban. Police and Government Administration Issues there were multiple instances across different provinces where issues related to workplace harassment, misconduct, or corruption within the police and government administrations have led to the resignation of senior officers, even chiefs. $8 million barn In the scenario surrounding the controversial $8 million barn purchase by the Trudeau government, 
public scrutiny and debate were ignited over the perceived extravagance and allocation of taxpayer funds. Questions emerged regarding the necessity and transparency of such an expensive acquisition, prompting concerns about the government's fiscal responsibility and prioritization of public spending. Allegations of mismanagement and misuse of taxpayer money would likely have intensified, further fueling public distrust and calls for greater accountability and transparency within the government's financial decisions. Financial Burders on Canada A series of bad decisions have put Canada into this crisis today. Giving $12 million to Loblaws to install new fridges to $13 billion grant to Volkswagen to open a factory in Ontario. Normally government gives tax breaks, grants to businesses but these do not even come close to anything. Volkswagen's $13 billion is biggest corporate welfare payout in modern Canadian history. Bombardier's $4 billion, which was collected over 50 years, doesn't even come close. Ultimately, the Trudeau government has left Canadians burdened with a staggering debt of $662 billion, continuously escalating with each passing year. This figure stands in stark contrast to the $630 billion accumulated by all previous prime ministers combined since 1867, signifying an unprecedented level of financial strain. The implications of this mounting debt appear insurmountable, potentially exerting long-term repercussions for the nation's financial stability and prosperity in the coming decades. Truckers protest. The recent truckers' protest in Canada became a symbol of public discontent with the government's policies. When Canadian truckers took to the streets in peaceful protest, they sought to be heard, to voice their concerns. Instead, the Trudeau government responded with an iron fist, invoking emergency powers that trampled the very essence of democratic dissent. The betrayal of trust, the violation of the basic right to protest, shattered the hopes of those who believed in the government's commitment to democratic values. The Prime Minister's own Deputy Prime Minister, Christia Freeland, said that COVID was a political opportunity. And, and his former Finance Minister, Bill Bourneau, says that the Prime Minister used vaccines as a wedge issue to divide people. And thus, a lot of people were so helpless and so desperate they ended up participating in a protest in Ottawa. This was an emergency that Justin Trudeau created by attacking his own population, by driving up their cost of living, by making it impossible for people to pay their bills and live their lives in peace. He caused the emergency that unfolded. And then when he caused it, he piled on, he poured more gasoline on the fire with nasty insults jabbing his finger in the faces of his own citizens, something that even today's report acknowledged contributed to the length and the intensity of the protest. Uh, Justice Rouleau said that he did not accept the organizers' descriptions of the protest as lawful, calm, peaceful, or something resembling a celebration. He wrote that the bigger picture reveals the situation in Ottawa was unsafe and chaotic. Justice Rouleau also found that the federal government's use of the Emergencies Act was justified. Do you accept Justice Rouleau's findings and do you regret endorsing the Freedom Convoy? Well, first of all, you, you, your question was typical of CBC, bias again. You uh, forgot to mention what the report said, which is um, more, more of an effort should have been made by government leaders at all levels during the protest to acknowledge that the majority of protesters were exercising their fundamental democratic rights. What I said before, during and after the protest was that I condemn anyone who behaves badly, breaks laws, or blockades critical infrastructure, while standing on the side of the hardworking people who have suffered so much under eight years of Justin Trudeau and were desperately trying to have their voices heard 
against an insulting and divisive Prime Minister. And uh, the, the only reason that we had this emergency is because Justin Trudeau wanted it to happen, because he wanted to distract and divide Canadians from the pain and suffering that he has caused by driving up their cost of living, making it impossible for our youth to own homes, by taxing our working class, and by imposing unnecessary and unscientific rules uh, that brought uh, the, an end to the livelihoods of countless heroes we needed for our economy. Thank you. COVID-19 vaccine mandate. Coercion over compassion in health mandates. The forced COVID-19 vaccine mandate stands as a stark reminder of the government's coercion over compassion, control over care. Canadians seeking autonomy over their healthcare decisions have been met with mandates that ignore their legitimate concerns and fears. The emotional distress of those grappling with the violation of their bodily autonomy, the fear of coercion overshadowing their medical choices, speaks volumes about the erosion of trust in the government's duty to safeguard the well-being of its citizens. The implementation of such mandates should be backed by clear, science-based information rather than the lies which are being exposed afterwards. Serious efforts should have been made to address concerns and hesitations as well as individuals' rights to choose their own health mandates without taking their entire freedom. A more effective public awareness campaign and better coordination with provinces and territories could have made the vaccine mandate more acceptable to the public. The community that faced the most restrictions on their freedoms in the last year were those who made a choice not to be vaccinated. I don't think I've ever experienced a situation in my lifetime where a person was fired from their job or not allowed to watch their kids play hockey or not allowed to go visit a loved one in long-term care or hospital, or not allowed to go get on a plane to either go across the country to see family or even travel across the border. So they have been the most discriminated against group that I've ever witnessed in my lifetime. That's a pretty extreme level of discrimination that we have seen. I don't take away any of the discrimination that I've seen in those other groups that you mentioned, but this has been an extraordinary time in the last uh, year in particular. And I want people to know that I find that unacceptable, that we are not going to create a segregated society on the basis of a, of a medical choice. Imposing beliefs on innocent minds parents protest. Another contentious issue was the protests by parents concerned about the implementation of LGBTQ inclusive curriculum in schools. The government's mandate to force LGBTQ curriculum without genuine consultation with parents and communities tore at the very fabric of family values and individual rights. Mothers and fathers, deeply invested in their children's education, were left helpless as their voices were silenced by a government that chose to impose its beliefs rather than foster understanding and cooperation. The emotional toll on these families, who felt betrayed and unheard, was immeasurable. Police are telling us about so much violence that's happening out in front of the state. Silencing voices of reason. In a move that reeks of authoritarianism, the Trudeau government's restrictions on free speech have silenced the voices of reason and dissent. Initiatives to regulate online content and restrict certain forms of expression have raised fears about the government's encroachment on individuals' right to express their opinions freely. The Trudeau government's failure to strike a balance between safeguarding against hate speech and preserving the principles of free speech has raised questions about its commitment to upholding democratic principles. Apart from that, exist some instances where individuals daring to express opinions contrary to the government's narrative have been targeted and censored, their thoughts and beliefs trampled upon in the name of political expediency. The emotional anguish of those whose voices have been suppressed and marginalized is a testament to the erosion of trust and freedom in the country. Trudeau's government has shattered the trust and confidence of Canadians through its callous disregard for democratic principles and individual freedoms. The emotional toll of their actions has left scars on the collective consciousness of the nation, underscoring the need for a government that listens, respects, and serves its people. 
It is time for Canadians to demand accountability and transparency, to reclaim their voices and rights, and to rebuild a government that values the emotional well-being and rights of its citizens above all else.